Hi everyone. In this video, you will be learning accounting of interest rate swap. Before that, you must understand what is interest rate swap. Before this video, you, you must have a thought, you might have a thought that IRS is a complicated thing and accounting would have been a very complicated thing. But I tell you, after this lecture, just 10 minutes, you will find it, its accounting is as easy as of any other product. You just first need to understand what is IRS. IRS is an interest rate swap. So it's basically a swap of its interest rate. So how do you uh, uh, enter into an agreement? Like you enter into an agreement on a certain date on like, let's say every quarter, you will pay a certain thing and receive a certain thing that's it what you will pay if you are paying uh, swapping fixed rate with variable rate so you will be paying fixed amount every quarter and will be getting a variable amount and variable amount will have a a reference point is it difficult for example you enter into agreement that for at every quarter for a principal of let's say 10 million for principal of 10 million you will be paying a fixed rate that is fixed rate of three percent and in return of it you will receiving whatever be the LIBOR rate whatever be the LIBOR rate plus plus one percent so you enter into an agreement like this so every quarter on three months six months nine months and you enter this in a for uh, let's say period of one year so for four quarters you will be paying a fixed amount and receiving a variable amount is it difficult so that's simple and you need to account it so for this accounting let's see what attributes what are the attributes for a uh, interest rate swap first of all first of all you need to account for principal just tell me what will be the accounting for principal Just think about it. So yes, this is the question you might get when you go for an interview. Just to tell you, in interest rate swap, there is exchange of interest only. Exchange of interest only. And principal is just a reference point. Principal is used for used for calculation only to calculate the interest that you're going to exchange principal is just a reference point so there is no accounting entry for principal principal is never exchanged in interest rate swap but if you go deep into accounting it is always part of your notes to accounts so principle is first thing is principle so it is used for calculation and it's part of notes to accounts so it is an off balance sheet item and you will be showing it that uh, for what amount you have entered into interest rate swap and you will be disclosing it so part of interested uh, notes to account as disclosure. I hope it's clear. So principal will not be accounted. There will no entry for principal. So I hope it's, this is clear. Second is interest. So interest is usually settled in net basis. 
it's like you will be paying 100 and receiving or uh, you will be receiving 100 and paying 80 so you will pass an accounting entry for 20 only so the accounting entry is for 20 only and if you are paying 100 and receiving 80 then also 20 and the entry will be uh, either no stro account debited or it will be credited to pnl so entry is for net pnl net profit and loss account okay the net profit you earned on this transaction and third is fair value so what accounting entry will do for fair value so in bonds or in trading securities or stock you already learned like whatever be the fair value you will be showing it as we do an accounting on reverse and refresh basis let's see an example so this is all the accounting for interested swap i believe everything is clear now let's go to an example it will be crystal clear so uh you are in western bank and it entered into an interest rate swap on 10th january to pay fixed and receive variable as per below terms so the principal is 10 million so what is the accounting entry principal just the selling entry no accounting entry no 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 okay what is the accounting entry to enter into a contract this is the another question when you go for entry what is the accounting entry when you enter into contract there will be no accounting entry to enter into contract if there is anything happening if there is any asset being generated so accounting is done only for the financial transaction so what is the contract what it's being generated so as you enter into contract if nothing is happening if let's say nothing is happening so there will be no accounting entry i hope it's clear okay and you what are the terms of the contract you will pay 3% every quarter that is copayment is quarterly and what will you receive libor plus 1% nowadays libor is they are replacing with ibor because of some irregularities with the libor rate now they are moving to an uh, ibor rate okay so you will be receiving libor plus 1% we can make a separate video on what is libor and ibor let's focus on the accounting of irs so you will be getting libor plus 1% and a uh, paying 3% and payment as quarterly and calculations are done on quarterly and here it's also important day count is always mentioned in the contract because it it is a matter of dispute for every 3 months what is 3 months how can you calculate 3 months so this then they say for 30 days we will consider every month for a 30 days and years will be considered as a year of 360 days for every month you will be uh considering 30 for every month you will be considering a month of 30 by 360 i hope it's clear so a month is of 30 days only and year will be considered as a year of uh a uh, year of like if it had not been there so for a feb month you will be considering uh, when calculating the interest 28 by 365 it can be also th- there but it has to be there in the contract but usually it is always what we have seen is like 30 by 360 is a usual practice okay i hope it's clear and maturity is one year let's see the accounting so on 10th when you enter into contract you just got lucky or you have some information i don't know the uh, swap yield curve moved in our favor and the value of irs has increased to 10000 so the contract you have entered now its value at 10000 you have not paid anything but its value is now 10000 what is the accounting entry so it's your derivative asset you will you have an asset derivative asset you call it derivative asset account debit to unrealized pnl so you have a profit unrealized profit of 10000 so derivative asset account debit to unrealized pnl so in your balance sheet you will show an asset of derivative asset for 10000 if you prepare a balance sheet for 10th of january i hope it's clear 
now on the next day on the next day some news has flown or something swap yields moved in our favor and the price of irs increased to 15000 so what accounting entry will power so i told you in the last lecture we do in investment bank the entries are on reverse and refresh basis so whatever asset you have shown you first reverse it so you have shown in balance sheet that you have a set of 10000 so you will reverse it credit asset and you have shown a profit of 10000 you will show a loss of 10000 so you have reversed it and now for 11000 you will not show additional profit of 5000 you have made you will show a total derivative asset of 15000 the value of your contract that is irs is now 15000 and the unrealized pnl on that asset is now 15000 i hope it's clear so and on this date in balance sheet you will show it at 15000 your irs or derivative asset so you i hope reverse and refresh accounting is clear so it's a revision from the last class only and now comes the payment date the settlement date on the settlement date let's see what was the value on 10th april so uh, on 10th january you entered and it was quarterly you can add 90 days so on the 10th april uh, libor rate was 2.8 percent so what you will be paying what you will be paying you will be paying the fixed three percent at what you will be receiving 2.8 plus one percent so you will be receiving 3.8 percent i hope it's clear so you'll be getting more okay so it means your irs it's still an asset and not liability had this libor and everything been in uh, not in your favor so it must have been shown at a derivative liability okay so it will just be entry will be just other way around okay so on 10th appeal uh, LIBOR is 2.8 percent and uh, and IRS on the prior date was 25,000 and on the next day on 10th April it reduced to 1,000 okay I hope it's clear so on from 25,000 to 1,000 okay so as we do reverse and refresh accounting on 10th April you will reverse your, the asset you were showing of 25,000 so you will credit the asset and debit the uh, unrealized PL account and show it as losses so what you will do you will uh, credit asset so debit unrealized PL account debit to derivative asset so you will reverse the asset and record the asset as per the new value and the new value is 1000 derivative asset account debit to uh, unrealized PL account. I hope it's clear. So th that is simple. Now you need to do the settlement. So it's 10 million. You will be paying 3%. That is 3 by 100. And for 3 months, so 1 month is of 30 days. And for 3 months, you will be paying, if you calculate, it comes out to be 75,000. I hope it's clear and what you will be getting you'll be getting 3.8 percent and it comes out to be you can calculate 95k so you have you made a 20k profit out of this contract for the very first quarter so you will deb how you'll do accounting nostro account debit to realize payroll you know what is nostro i told you in last class bank's bank account is nostro account so all the payments are receipts are through nostro account so it's the bank's bank account okay so nostro account debit okay it's not uh 15 it's it's 20000 and 20000 okay i hope it's clear and just just to infer something so it usually happens so whatever be the NPV or the net present value of the asset just before the settlement, just before it being matured, 
like it was 25000 now it reduced to 1000 because you are getting the, the the value of 20k uh, the the value was more because uh, it has an uh, profit of uh, uh, the, the the realized cash that you would be getting on the maturity or the payment date okay so on this balance sheet date, you will show 100 and in uh, sorry uh, 1k and nostro you will increase by 20k okay uh, uh, that's the 10th april sorry 10th april that's balance sheet as on 10th april so i hope accounting of irs is clear and you must be wondering how it looks so simple so thank you because you are very intelligent thank you so much